Hey guys, in today's video, we're going over what is the best XLR wireless adapter. So I've reviewed three of these so far as their own individual videos. And on the third one, you guys asked if I could do a comparison between all of them. Well, I found a fourth wireless system and instead of doing a specific dedicated video on it, I figured I would just do the comparison video since that's what you guys asked for. So these can be beneficial for three main reasons. One, obviously for singing. So if you wanna turn a microphone into a wireless microphone, you can do that with these adapters. Second, you can use this to wirelessly transmit to a PA system. So instead of having to run cables to your PA speakers, you can use these wireless instead, which is great. This is also can be used for interviews or speeches or just talking in general, especially for like weddings and stuff like that. So I've used all three of the ones that I've reviewed previously live and I actually find myself using them in different situations based on each model. So in this video I'm going to go over a comparison between them to see which one is right for you to fit your needs. I don't think there's necessarily one specific one that is the best one although I will give you my opinion on that at the end but it's mostly what are you looking for in these wireless XLR adapters and which one is going to work best for your setup. Before we get started, this is a music tech channel. I do gear reviews, tutorials. I do gear giveaways on this channel. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell to be notified when I put out new videos. And hitting the thumbs up button is a free way to support the channel. Okay, but first, let's go ahead and take a closer look at all four of these. Okay, so these are the four wireless I'm gonna go over. So starting with this one, this is the one by Licato. This one is in the 5.8 gigahertz frequency. It's got 100 feet of range. It's got five hours of battery life. There are four channels to choose from, and it's listed around 90 to $100. This next one is the newest one. This one operates in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range. There's 100 feet of range. It has six hours of battery life. I believe there are six channels to choose from, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But this one is the cheapest and listed at $70. The next one is the Alto Stealth 1. This one operates in the UHF frequency of 542 to 566 megahertz. It has 100 feet range. It has four hours of battery life. There's 16 channels to choose from, and it's listed at about $100. This last one is is the Kimifun wireless. And this one has different frequencies per region. I'll post them on the screen. But for the United States where I'm at, it operates from 902 to 928 megahertz. You get 165 feet range with the antennas on. You get 65 feet of range with the antennas off. It has five hours of battery life, although that does cut down to about two and a half if you use the built-in phantom power. Yes, this one does have phantom power. You have 16 channels to choose from, and it's the most expensive, but not by much, at $140. So for the Licato one, you push the button here in order to turn it on, and you'll see the little ring turns blue, and then you have four different channels to choose from, and it's pretty cool when you change the channel on the transmitter, it changes it on the receiver as well, so you don't have to go manually change both of them. Changing it on the transmitter will change it on the receiver as well. And this one does charge over USB. Okay, so this is the Digit Now one. So this one's pretty simple. Turn on the power for the transmitter and the receiver, they sync, and that's it, you're ready to go. This one also does charge via USB, and it does have a mute switch. So if you're on the transmitter, if you push the button quickly, it will mute the audio, push it again, and will unmute it. And something really nice about this one that I like is that it came with these adapters for both the transmitter and the receiver to convert them to quarter inch if you need them to be quarter inch. Pretty nice that they included this as an option, especially since it's the cheapest one. You also do you get a three-year warranty with this as well. Okay, and here's the Alto Stealth one. This is the skinniest one out of all of them. And you would think that it charges over USB because you can see these ports here on the side, but actually these run off of AA batteries, which is really cool. Both of them have AA batteries and the USB port is used if you want to just use them continuously. Because again, the battery life is about four hours on these. Out of all of them, probably the least battery life out of all of them. But you can either use it with a AA battery or you can have it run continuously with the USB B port, which is pretty cool. Setup's pretty easy. Hold the button on both of them. You can see the channel up here on the top. Just set them both to the same channel and you're ready to go. All right, and this last one is the Kimifun one. So you power it up and then you have this button right here. So you hold it for a second and it gets to channel change mode and you just manually set them to the same channel. Pretty straightforward. The transmitter does have an option for phantom power. You can see the phantom power light lights up. Again, that cuts the battery life about in half. So just keep that in mind. But it is cool that this one has phantom power. It's the only one that has an option for phantom power. So this one also does charge via USB. The other thing that's cool about this one is that you can take the antennas off if you want. That does cut the range by quite a bit. So usually I leave the antennas on. And it's also nice because it does come with this nice carrying case that protects it and stores everything. So just a nice way to travel with it. 
Okay, so obviously the next important thing would be to do a tone test. If you've seen my channel before, you know I hate doing A-B comparisons. I'm going to take one minute just to rant about this just a little bit. I don't like the idea of us really sitting down with headphones, really listening closely to stuff that is meant to be used live. Where you're listening right now, you're probably not going to be in the live environment where you're going to be using these wireless. And I said you're on your headphones. I've, how many people actually listen to these on like really nice headphones and how many people are just listening to it on their phone? I specifically don't like comparing tones. And the reason why is because our ears play so many tricks on us. Something can sound darker when in reality, it was just the previous one that you heard sounded brighter and the darker one actually sounded more flat, but your ear thought it was darker because it heard the brighter one first. Not to mention that people always want a dry tone, but it's like, well, you never just use this thing dry. You always add EQ, compression, reverb, and stuff like that live. I always just have the philosophy, does it sound good or usable? If so, I'm going to use it. If it sounds bad, you don't need to compare it to anything else. You will be able to hear, oh, that does not sound good. That is not what I'm looking for. However, I do know that most people prefer that. So I'm still gonna give you guys a tone test just so you can hear how these sound. But I am gonna do it this way. I'm not gonna tell you which one is which. I'm going to do eight tone samples. So each wireless will have two separate tone samples. I'm not gonna tell you which ones they are. I will list them down in the comments down below. If you truly, truly heard a difference between these that was so drastic that you decided, oh, I have to get this based on the tone test, check down below if the one that you liked the most twice is the exact same one, then you should probably go with that one. That's how I'm gonna do this. It will be in a random order. You don't know which one is which. So here you go. Testing the mic, mic check, one, two, mic check, one, two. Testing the mic, check, check, one, two. Test, test, mic check, one, two. Test, test, testing the mic, mic check, one, two. 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 Testing the mic, check, check, one, two. Testing the mic, one, two, mic check, one, two, testing the mic, mic check, one, two, testing the mic. Test, test, mic check, one, two, test, test, testing the mic, mic check, one, two, testing the mic, mic check, one, two. Testing the mic, mic check, one, two, mic check, one, two, testing the mic, check, check, one, two. Testing the mic, one, two, mic check, one, two, testing the mic, mic check, one, two, testing the mic. Testing the mic, mic check, one, two, testing the mic, mic check, one, two, testing the mic, Check, check, one, two. Okay, so I'm in the middle of editing this and there's two things I wanna point out. So one, I'm assuming you guys heard the hiss from that one. That was the cheap one. I'll just give that one away. The rest of them I'll leave down below. But you heard the hiss. You didn't have to hear a tone comparison to the other ones to know, hey, that doesn't sound good. I think that kind of just helps prove my point with this. The second thing is also very important about these is that the cheap stuff might not work with all of your equipment. This was not noticeable using it with a speaker, but using it with my audio interface, I could really hear it. So hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully that makes you understand why I think the way that I do about tone tests. You heard it, you didn't need a tone test to know if that sounded bad, and it just sounds bad on my audio interface. It doesn't sound bad everywhere. Two things to keep in mind. Okay, so if you really heard a difference, check down below. If you really didn't hear a difference, if you're just like, oh, they all sound good, then just keep watching. It's really not even worth checking to see what they are. My personal opinion, your opinion might vary. That's why I still did this. Okay, so like I said, I've used all three of them live. The new one I haven't really used live and I'll address that here in a minute. But the other three I've used live in three different scenarios. So the Licato one, I generally use as a vocal mic. My wife and I were very blessed that earlier this year, we got to spend two weeks in the Bahamas and you know we traveled with our gear and this was the wireless that we used for her wireless microphone. We didn't have to pack a big wireless with the transmitter and receiver and all that stuff. It's a lot easier to travel with this. But because it's so slim and it doesn't have like an antenna that sticks out, all the other ones have an antenna that sticks out except for the newer one, which again, I'll address here in a minute. So that's why I like that one for a vocal mic. The Kimafun one, I tend to use for a PA system. Now with the band that I usually use that for, there's not a whole lot of 900 megahertz stuff going on in that one. So it makes the most sense to use that. There's another band that I play with, my 90s cover band, and we have a lot of stuff in 900 megahertz, so I don't use that one for that. And then the Alto Stealth one, because it's so slim, it's very easy to plug into a mixer. I've been using that for our talkback mic. So if you don't know about a talkback mic, I do have a video about five different ways that you can set up a talkback mic for your band, but I do find myself using this one for a talkback mic, or if somebody forgot their wireless mic, or we have like a bass player or something like that, and I'll have them use this 
for their vocal mic. Not really someone who's going to be walking around singing with it, but sitting on a mic stand like a bass player who does backup vocals. So with all the other ones, you kind of have to get an XLR extender because it doesn't really fit into XLR inputs on a mixer, but the Alto Stealth one is so skinny that it can plug right into a mixer, which is nice about that. That's usually how I tend to use all three of those. So the 2.4 one, I have not used because it is in 2.4 and it is the cheapest one. So I have a whole video explaining about 2.4 gigahertz. You should watch that if you use anything on 2.4. 2.4 will work more times than it doesn't, but in my experience, it's the most least reliable frequency. So that's why I generally don't use it. If you do use it, keep it away from Wi-Fi routers and don't use too many of them. Again, watch my video if you wanna find out an in-depth understanding of 2.4 gigahertz wireless music gear. So to me, I have the three other ones which are on more reliable frequencies, so therefore I don't really have a desire to use this one. However, it is also the cheapest one, and that is important to some people, so I am including it in the list. So the most important thing with these, in my opinion, is the frequency that they transmit on. These are cheap wireless products. The cheaper the wireless, the less frequency options that you have. Sorry if you've seen my channel before, I have to say this in my videos. So my expensive wireless has thousands of frequencies to choose from. That's why I paid almost $1,000 for some of my wireless gear. These have somewhere between four and 16. There's a massive difference on how many frequencies there are to find a clear signal. If you get to a venue and those four to 16 channels are taken, or it's crowded in there, or that frequency range is just crowded in the area that you're playing, that means you can't use the wireless. That is something that you have to accept. If you pay more money, you get more frequency options and it's much less likely that you will have no channels to find a clear signal to transmit and receive on. If you are looking for a more mission critical wireless, there is the Alto Stealth Pro, which is a bigger step up from this Alto Stealth One. And also I have my portable Sennheiser system. I have reviewed that portable Sennheiser system. That's the main one that I use for wireless PA in mission critical gigs. And you can check out that video by clicking up above or down below. So when it comes to the frequency, if you have a bunch of stuff already in 5.8 gigahertz, I don't recommend buying the Licato one. If you have a bunch of stuff in 900, like my 90s cover band, I don't recommend using the Kimifun one. And especially on the 2.4 wireless frequency spectrum, I don't recommend using more than two. I personally actually only use one if I ever use anything on 2.4, my personal opinion. So I am going to make my recommendations, but first I do want you to understand two things. Is that one, I highly recommend that you watch my video of what is the best cheap wireless guitar system. Cause the idea that I go over in that is very, very similar to this. When you're buying cheap stuff, sometimes it's not gonna work with your setup. If you go through reviews and comment sections of these cheap wireless products or watch another video, some people will have a ton of buzz with theirs. Other people will say that it works great. More times than not, it will work great. You do just have to understand that it is a risk that it won't work with your gear when you buy cheaper stuff. So I recommend to buy it, try it out immediately. You're gonna know if it doesn't work and return it if it doesn't work with your specific setup, especially when you're buying cheap. And second, I know people are gonna ask about latency. None of these have latency that you're gonna notice by themselves. However, you can get compounded latency if you're using multiple things that have latency and they compound onto each other. So these devices by themselves will not have latency that is noticeable. However, if you compound it, that's where you might notice it. Okay, so what are my recommendations for these? If you're looking for one for a wireless vocal mic for like a singer who's going to be walking around, I think the Licato one is the best option. It doesn't have an antenna that sticks out, so it actually looks like it kind of complements the mic the most. And like I said, we did that in the Bahamas and it was very, very reliable. The runner up to that one would be the Alto Stealth. And again, if it's just sitting on a mic stand, you know, like a backup vocalist or something like that, it's pretty normal. It doesn't look off really. The Kimifun one is just so big and thick. It does look a little bit goofy. If you don't care about look, then it doesn't really matter. That's just my opinion personally. For PA systems, I personally like the Kimifun one because it has that external antenna and it is bigger. And that's mostly what I use it for. Like I said, I don't really use it for microphones. However, all of these can really be used for a wireless PA system. I just tend to gravitate toward the Kimifun one because it has the longest range out of all of them. So in my opinion, that's the most important one because obviously you have to have 
your wireless working for your PA. If your microphone cuts out, at least all the other music's going. If your PA cuts out, that's pretty noticeable. But again, all of them do work pretty well. That Licato one has been used for a wireless PA. I've used that Alto Stealth one as wireless PA as well. The Alto Stealth one probably has the least amount of battery. So if you are doing a four hour set, I would recommend plugging it in and using it continuously instead of using a battery. If you need a mic with phantom power, you have no choice. Chemifun is the one because that is the only one that has phantom power. So that's the one I would recommend if you need phantom power. Do keep in mind that definitely drastically reduces the battery life on that. So just keep that in mind. Also, don't accidentally turn it on because I did that at a wedding last year. I accidentally turned it on. I didn't realize that. So make sure that the phantom power is off if you don't plan or need to use it. If I had to pick which one is the best out of all of them, I'd probably say it's the Licata one just because there's so many different options that it can be used for. It can be used for singing. It can be used for PA. It can be used for mics. It can be used for speeches. It's quite affordable, although it does have probably the least amount of channels on there. So if you are looking for more channel options, the Kimifun is the second one that I use the most. And like I said, the Licato one is usually for vocal mics, and then the Kimifun one is usually used for the PA system. That's generally how I've been using it. And then again, the Alto Stealth has been for like talkback mic and stuff like that. Again, it really just depends on what you're looking for. If I had to choose, that's what I would decide. So I hope that helped you guys make a decision. Purchase links for all of these will be down below in the description down below. Using those links is a free way to support the channel at no extra cost to you. So I would appreciate it. So I hope this helped you guys out. If you guys made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, just hit the thumbs up button. It does a ton to support the YouTube algorithm and I would appreciate it. If you guys want to check out the wireless that I use for PA systems at a higher end situations, check out my video on my wireless Sennheiser system. That's such a great system. Obviously, you have to spend a little bit more for it, but it's an awesome system to have. And also, don't forget, I do highly recommend that you watch my what is the best cheap wireless guitar system part three in order to find more info about using cheap wireless products. You can check out both of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Scott Ewell Music. If you guys have any other cool gear you want me to check out, please leave a comment down below. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.